Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center, and for the Center for Security Policy, with information about Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson and his infamous dalliance with the Islamic Society of North America. It was bad enough that Johnson recently spoke at the annual convention of ISNA, the Islamic Society of North America, which is a group with demonstrable ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. But what he said there made it even worse. First, what is ISNA? According to Discover the Networks, the Islamic Society of North America was established in July 1981 by U.S.-based members of the Muslim Brotherhood, with a background as leaders of the Muslim Students Association. As author and terrorism expert Steve Emerson puts it, ISNA grew out of the Muslim Students Association, which was also founded by Brotherhood members. Indeed, Muslim Brothers would dominate ISNA's leadership throughout the Society's early years. The investigative project on terrorism adds that in a 2008 court filing, ISNA and its affiliate, the North American Islamic Trust, did not deny evidence of their ties to Hamas and the Brotherhood, but simply argued that the evidence was old. Nonetheless, Jay Johnson chose to speak at ISNA's convention in September 2016. First, he assured the crowd, tonight, I will not talk to you about counterterrorism. Then, the theme of Johnson's address was that Muslims in the U.S. were unfairly targeted for discrimination and harassment and that he was on their side. His principal argument that this unsubstantiated targeting is unfair was nothing but his denial of the painfully obvious link between Islam and terrorism. Johnson said, You have heard us before multiple audiences of different political stripes refuse to bend to the political pressure to call terrorism Islamic extremism. We know that ISIL, though it claims the banner of Islam, occupies no part of your religion which is founded on peace. He knows that? How does he know that? Having declared that terrorism had nothing to do with Islam, Johnson was then able to dismiss concern about Islam in the U.S. as just another manifestation of the ugly prejudice that he said had made life difficult for other immigrant groups in the past. He told the crowd, Your story is an American story, told over and over again, generation after generation, of waves of people who struggle for, seek, and will eventually win your share of the American dream. Know the history of this country and you will know that whether it's Catholic Americans, Jewish Americans, Mormon Americans, Irish Americans, Italian Americans, Japanese Americans, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, or Muslim Americans, this will be true. Yes, let's remember. You remember when Catholic Americans, Jewish Americans, Mormon Americans, Irish Americans, Italian Americans, Japanese Americans, African Americans, and Hispanic Americans flew those planes into the towers and bombed the Boston Marathon and murdered 13 Americans in cold blood at Fort Hood and four in Chattanooga, 15 in San Bernardino, 49 in Orlando, and tried to commit mass murder in Garland, Texas, and in so many other places. You remember those global terror organizations made up of Catholics, Jews, Mormons, Irish, and so on, committing acts of violence around the globe and threatening the imminent conquest of the U.S. and the rest of the free world. The Obama administration's solicitude flows entirely one way, toward Muslims as victims of discrimination, which according to the administration's own hate crime statistics is a false and inaccurate claim anyway. Meanwhile, the jihad advances, as do Islamic supremacist attempts to assert Sharia norms over American norms. Johnson, of course, had nothing to say about such things, or about the unaccountable phenomenon of so many Muslims in the U.S. adhering to the version of Islam that Johnson assures us is un-Islamic. And then, at the same Isna convention, were Johnson's fellow speakers. Among them was Yasir Qadhi, who has taught that Muslims can freely take the lives and property of non-Muslims in jihad. Qadhi has said, the life and property of a mushrik, that is, one who worships others besides Allah, holds no value in the state of jihad, which means if they don't say, la ilaha illa Allah, that is, there is no God but Allah, their lives and property are halal, that is, they can be taken by Muslims. Dalia Magahid spoke as well. Obama's former advisor on Muslim affairs once appeared on a British television show aired by the pro-Sharia group Hizbut Tahrir, where she said, Sharia is not well understood, and Islam as a faith is not well understood. How have we all misunderstood Islam? Well, she said, we've associated it with maximum criminal punishments and laws that to many people seem unequal to women. 
The Western view of Sharia, she said, was oversimplified. She claimed that most Muslim women worldwide associate Islam and Sharia with gender justice. Another speaker was Tariq Ramadan. French journalist Carolyn Faure, in her book Brother Tariq, notes that Ramadan is, quote, remaining scrupulously faithful to the strategy mapped out by his grandfather, who was Muslim Brotherhood founder Hassan Albana, a strategy of advance stage by stage toward the imposition of Islamic law in the West. She explains that he invests words like law and democracy with subtle and carefully crafted new definitions, permitting him to engage in an apparently inoffensive discourse while remaining faithful to an eminently Islamist message and without having to lie overtly, at least not in his eyes. Also at Isna was the celebrated Kizr Khan. Intellius has recorded that Kizr Khan has worked at Hogan Lovell's LLP. According to the Washington Free Beacon, the man whom the mainstream media styles as David to Donald Trump's Goliath, Hogan Lovell's LLP, another U.S. firm hired by the Saudis, is registered to work for the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia through 2016, disclosures show. Robert Kyle, a lobbyist from the firm, has bundled $50,850 for Clinton's campaign. The Saudi government supplied the Clinton Foundation with millions. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has given between 10 and 25 million to the foundation, while friends of Saudi Arabia have contributed between 1 and 5 million. Now, why is the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security appearing with this Saudi-funded, politically motivated individual and others with these ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood and open advocacy of jihad and Sharia? The answer is obvious, because he shares their agenda. I'm Robert Spencer.